So the next feature I want to focus on for setting up an electronics engineering lab is the multimeter. Now it's a very basic tool, I mean it's one of the first ones you should acquire when you're getting into electronics, but it's just an ever enduring tool. In the real life applications you can use them every day and they can provide you with fairly accurate measurements with a wide range of measurements that I can take. So let's look more into it. Now there's two basic multimeters that you can buy today. There's the analog and the digital multimeter. I don't have any analog meters and I won't cover them because I do believe they are a waste of an investment. Because first off, they're an old technology that's been replaced and you can't be assured of their accuracy anymore. Where the digital multimeter is very convenient and actually probably a more accurate meter. It also provides a lot more measurements, so I think it's a better investment for the money. And within the digital multimeter category, there's two types of multimeters. There's the manual ranging, where you have to select a subcategory in volts. So if you want to measure a 20 volt source, you have to go to the 20 volt source. And then there's the auto ranging, which automatically selects the appropriate setting once you're in the category. Though I will admit you'll probably learn a little bit more with the manual ranging. It's sort of an annoying tool, and when you're a little bit more in depth in the subject of electronics, this one provides a fast, easy way to make measurements, and you're doing more measurements instead of thinking, so you'll probably do a lot more with this, and you won't be as annoyed, so I highly recommend the auto-ranging multimeter. Now, one of the first features you should look for in a multimeter are the terminals on the bottom. A really cheap meter will only have two terminals, and that will be your common and everything else. And that represents a really cheap, underdesigned multimeter, where a higher end one will have a couple of terminals, and especially one dedicated for high current, another one dedicated for current, and another one dedicated to everything else. So that way you can be assured that you're making accurate measurements and you're doing them safely. On the two uh, terminal meters, you're really putting yourself at risk because generally a lot of them aren't fused and if they are fused they're not fused for that much and if you make the mistake of measuring a high current source on something that isn't geared for that you can really do some damage to yourself your multimeter can blow up and it can be an extremely fatal incident now aside from the terminals other features that you should look for in a multimeter are its ability to take measurements of other things all multimeters will pretty well come with the standard of measuring voltages in both DC and AC and currents in multiple ranges but you should, the features you should look for are continuity and capacitance are really handy nowadays with our electronics and they're pretty well an essential part of a multimeter nowadays. Another handy feature is your temperature where you can measure heat sinks and other things so that gives you the ability to measure wasted heat and like wattage so it's a very useful tool to have that when you're designing electronics as well as the hertz and the duty cycle and that just gives you the ability to measure the frequency as well as the duty cycle of pulse with modulation. So I highly recommend looking for those settings. Another thing I highly recommend for it is looking for a multimeter with a dedicated microamps, a dedicated milliamps, and a dedicated amp setting. Now one thing about the multimeter I highly do recommend is more than one. And the reason why I suggest this is because you're allowed to check the accuracy of your actual multimeter. Like Even though these are the exact same models, they may not take the exact same measurements. So it gives you a way to check your work, as well as taking multiple things, seeing situations where, you know, when this voltage is applied to this, you can get the reading up on the other side of the op amp all simultaneously. So it offers you a really convenient feature if you have more than one. So I highly recommend investing in that. Now there's quite a bit of other features you can take into account for a multimeter, but I feel like the ones I mentioned right now are pretty well the most essential and should be not overlooked in any sense. But I highly recommend this model. Uh, it's an amazing multimeter. At Lowe's and stuff in Canada you can pick it up for 89 bucks, or you can go on Amazon.com and pick it up for 27 and I'll include the link for it below. And it's a really solid multimeter that I had for a couple of years and it's just still shining through. And I also have a review on it, which I'll include the link right here if you want to watch it, which I do recommend if you're interested in the meter. Anyways, thanks for watching and have yourself a great day.